So it's, it's just in the wrong view, it's a presenter view. So let me try to do it. Okay, so that's going to help figure it out. So just sit behind the computer and make sure nothing goes wrong. Yeah. Just keep stealing what it's doing. So hopefully I can just see if we can get the sound through.
child surprising him about you. Yeah, I agree. Now it's confused as to which one. Yeah, he's saying that. marketing and well business and accounting so both all business and all accounting um, but I love the marketing class and this is one of the presentations kind of morphed for your, your view, viewing pleasure that I use for students to help them understand the concept of marketing strategy um, uh, so that's what we're going to do so obviously how many of you recognize this oh everybody yeah <laughs> okay good <clears throat> Now, let me try one more thing because I wanted to see this presenter view and I don't. Now I do. Okay. Okay. So it's a conceptual presentation of the process that we use in, in business development to come up with um, marketing strategies. The video game marketing industry has epitomized the, um, the marketing strategy. Uh, a perfection in marketing strategies that helps their business move forward because from day one video games have consistently gotten more and more popular and earned more and more money and um, they've motivated their 
there's an art place called GameWorks in downtown Seattle, and they have this uh, like skiing thing, and you actually get on it, and you you know I would never do that. I'd never jump off the side of a mountain like that in, on a snowboard, but on this machine, I would do things way more extreme because it's a little safer. So um, we can do something that may maybe we wouldn't regu regularly do in our normal lives. So this is just a um, a chart of kind of the years, and these are some of the ones we're going to go over. But you can see if, if any, any any industry, any marketing industry in the business field should look like this. Like we start out and we do pretty well, and then we, we add something new and we add something new, and the old stuff kind of falls away, right? Um, we don't even have, well, we do have Pong. <laughs> I, you can still play it, actually. And we still do have arcades, but they're not as popular nearly as they were back in the 80s. So um, that's just a timeline. Successful strategic marketing progression should create for any industry a graph that looks similar to this one. Video game industry crash occurred in 82 to 84 with several North American video companies going out of business and filing for bankruptcy. So a lot of the, the changes happened because players fell in and out of the market. Okay, so Pong, we're gonna start with Pong. It was shipped in 1972, but you'll probably be interested to know that it was not the first video game. It was just the first commercially successful video game. Several were introduced, but none of them took off the way Pong did. Um, it was also a standalone coin-operated video game, and we could play it on our big old consoles at home. Does anybody know what Atari means? I kill. Pardon? I kill. Yeah, like hit the target. Yeah, exactly. Um, in Japanese, monochromatic. Uh, it's a monochromatic game. We didn't have any color. Uh, it was played on television sets with a hookup console. The console was as big as our TVs are today. Of course, the TVs were huge then. But, um, and you could play with one or two players. So that was a big deal. But that means your buddy has to come over to your house and your parents have to approve, right? Um, <clears throat> so can you guys guess what the originators of Atari do now? Anybody? Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney were the two that founded the engineering company that first created um, the very first arcade video game that was uh, attempted to put out commercially in 1971, which was called Computer Space. But anybody ever heard of Computer Space? <laughs> no. <laughs> Me either. Um, they later moved into the pinball arena, and one of them went on to work with Apple, and one of them went on to design vacuum cleaners, <laughs> which he still does today. So. You can dance too. And, uh, U.S. arcades raked in 50, uh, five billion dollars in 1981. Now, $5 billion then is a ton of money today. Um, it would be equivalent. Um, Americans spend more than 75,000 hours playing video games. And generally, we're all at the arcades, right? We're feeding our quarters in. <clears throat> um, in about 1985, Tetris was launched. Um, it became a very successful puzzle game. Um, one of the reasons why that, that Tetris came about is because, um, what can you guess? Space race. Not everybody was interested in shooting, right? Or eating ghosts or whatever. So, um, so this is kind of the beginning of, of Tetris and to kind of what it looks like today. So it's still around. Uh, it has sold as of January 21st, 2010, which is the last data I could find on it, um, 100 million copies. That's a lot of, of copies. And it's played on all platforms, even on your phones. Did you see the latest Nintendo newsletter? Whoa, I can't get nice it graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the Legend of Zelda game. It's really rad. Those creatures from Canada are pretty bad. Will you be the one to witness the birth of the incredible Nintendo Entertainment System? 
the one to play with Rob, the extraordinary video robot. Batteries not included. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. Would you be the first to raise the incredibly accurate Zephyr? Not a guy. Games like Zephyr. Duck Hunt or Action Packed, Hogan's Alley, and High Flying Kung Fu, each sold separately. Would you be the one to experience the Nintendo Entertainment System? Comes with Rob, Zephyr, Control Deck, Two Controllers, Gyromite, and Duck Hunt. What will the future bring from Nintendo? More hits like Super Mario Brothers. Arcade hits like Kung Fu. Nintendo has the most video game hits. Hogan's Alley, Duck Hunt, and more like baseball and Excite Fight. And you can play them only on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. <laughs> Nintendo at this point has 90% of the whole video game marketing um, in the early 90s. I actually lived in Redmond, Washington, uh, two blocks from Nintendo um, that when this ha was all happening. And um, everybody, all the college students wanted to be the game testers and look for all the bugs, but they brought all these Japanese people in, so our whole neighborhood spoke J Japanese and we couldn't communicate with them. Um, the Legend of Zelda, which was the video game in the first commercial that you saw, um, is credited with helping to establish um, the success of action adventure. So we've got uh, jumping and shooting and looking for things. Actually, Zelda looked for things, which um, was a big change from Pac-Man and the same old thing. You know, you're just eating the same ghosts every time. marketing team here when you go from Legends of Zelda and the robot dude shooting at the TV. Uh, what brings about Mario? Trying to reach a younger audience. Younger audience, um, also interaction with each other. Um, we start playing, you know, we, we're playing Pong and we're just by ourselves. I mean, you can actually play with two people, but there's still no communication going on. Um, this was the first game that we actually could direct the, the Characters in, in uh, Pac-Man, they all, you know, they just went through the trial. We can go backwards and forwards, and we can jump up and and jump over and things like that. So it was the first directioning play game. Um, it was launched in '87. It's still very, very popular. Um, Super Mario Brothers becomes the top-selling franchise of all time. So a franchise, of course, just like McDonald's, they have multiple facilities, multiple games that um, come out. Uh, with 509 million units sold at the end of 2012. So again, that's the closest for the most recent data that's out there. So we had a lot of boys, but we didn't have any girls. So how do you get girls? Let them dress their characters. So Sims was uh, allowed us to dress the characters and design their house and their yard and their pets and all of that stuff. Um, it was launched in 1990, and it was the first game that was mostly played by females. So 60% um, of the players at Sims are female. Uh, it sold more than 16 million copies in its first year, which is huge. Um, and it became the best-selling PC franchise in history with 90 million units. Now, I'm not very interested in Sims. I've never been. Um, but the reason that it is considered one of the best-selling PC franchises is this. There are millions of them. <laughs> And every year, pretty much, you can see this is the timeline. There's actually one slated to be out in 215, but if I added 215, it was going to get so small you wouldn't be able to read it. So we have all of these Sim games, and um, the good thing about the Sim franchise is it's actually targeting different groups. So I may be interested in society and stories, and the boys may be interested in safari and golf or whatever. So you've got a, a wider range of, of uh, players. And again, that's as, as a marketing team, that's our goal. Um, some of the games, like Sims Online, shut down in 2008. They, they aren't all available anymore. They put them out and then they go away. So you kind of can't play it anymore, so you want the next one. So it's kind of a marketing strategy to keep people buying. Sims Social set, shut down in 2013. Um, Simsville canceled almost at completion uh, to focus on some other. Games. So some of them weren't even, like, there was a Sim Mars 
which wasn't very <laughs> popular. Um, Sim Social was intended to launch on Facebook, uh, but it was never completed uh, for whatever reason, probably disagreements with Facebook. But anyway, so there's lots of, you know, they're trying to get to, again, the use of, the potential use of Facebook gets the game into the, the player's hands. Okay, so now you've got girls, you've got boys, you got jumping and you got turning around and kicking and, sorry, you kicked and shot through fruit at each other, right? What's next? How can you make more money? How can we make more money as a, a video game team? Do something new. Yeah, do something new that hasn't been done. Like, sell stuff! <laughs> We got movies and books and coloring books and clothing and oh my gosh, everything you could possibly have. Pokemon trading cards are still traded on eBay. Um, they get in the middle of my baseball cards. I don't own any of them, but you look for trading cards and so I'm a big baseball fan. But um, There's international tournaments you can play. Um, there are events kind of like the Star Trek conventions for Pokemon uh, that still exist today. So. Um, it's still a very big deal. Cartoons on Saturday morning. Um, we all know Pikachu, right? That's, that's the main, kind of the main, most uh, common character, most well known. Okay, so now we got girls, we got boys. We're selling all this stuff and we're making it. At this point, we're making tons of money. This was an ingenious idea, you guys, that you came up with it. <laughs> so now, how are we going to? get it into the hands of people who are on the go. Phone. Phone, right. So, this is the original version of Snake. How many of you have played it? It's really hard, actually. <laughs> um, it doesn't look very complicated. And even though it doesn't have the greatest uh, visuals, it was the, the first game we were actually able to play outside of um, our house and the, and the video game arcade. Uh, had poor graphics, simple um, gameplay. I actually, this video here about the one that's like, snakes don't belong in Alaska, I have no idea how I came across it, but I thought, oh, that's perfect. Um, this game is, is credited with a huge boost to the cellular industry. So all of a sudden, the cell companies had to get on uh, better handsets, better graphics, more color, and better, faster networks because um, this kind of stuff started bogging things down and you'll see throughout the, the presentation that um, video games are credited uh, in very many places throughout history with uh, technology boosts for different reasons. So. What do you think the number one open application of all applications in the world is? Solitaire. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so this is somebody winning this all year, obviously. So obviously we all play, right? And the reason that everybody plays this is because it's pre-installed on our computers and we don't have to purchase it. Okay, Mortal Kombat comes out in, I want to say, 95. Um, 94, Video right. games have become a four billion dollar a year business, and a great many children, as you parents know, have put them on their Christmas lists. As ABC's Bill Greenwood reports, there was a growing concern on Capitol Hill that parents who buy some of those games may not realize just how much violence they're getting. One of the most vicious games is called Mortal Kombat. The objective is to finish off your opponent violently. Another method is decapitation. Critics, including the National PTA, say such video games contribute to violence in real life. And television's Captain Kangaroo says parents are not paying enough attention. We understand that these are not harmless toys, that uh, they can indeed uh, cause great emotional and uh, other damage to a child. So, 
parents start complaining about the violence because now they start paying attention because it's on news. So the ratings start coming out. The Entertainment Software Rating Board, ESRB, um, was conceived, uh, required all video games to be rated, and it had to be located on the packaging outside the video game so that parents that were, who were buying it could, um, were aware. They're similar to movie uh, motion picture uh, rating systems, and they also maintain a code of ethics for advertising and production of video games. Now, um, this was a long time ago. Things have, are much more bloody and realistic now, but um, the, the goal is to target the video game at the appropriate audience. Now, um, you know, we've gotten rid of cigarette ads, I think, and pretty much uh, alcohol ads during the times when children would watch TV, but I think the next step would be getting rid of some of the video game advertising that may not be appropriate for age, age of child. I think it's that, that code of ethics kind of guides that today for video game manufacturers and advertisers, but um, it's not a requirement yet. Okay, so what what was coming now? We're still going to the arcade and having friends come over to us and playing on our cell phones, um, but we still have to go buy things. So what comes next? The internet, right? So, was the first video game that was able to be downloaded. You didn't have to go anywhere. You did have to have a credit card though, right? Um, took, it, took advantage of the rise of the internet, and in 2000, the global market for online games overall was estimated at $15 billion. And that was a long time ago. That's 15 years ago. Alright, so um, now we've got Mortal Kombat. We've lost to kind of some of the girls. Sims is trying to ramp up, but they're, they've been around for a while, so it's not so interesting. So we've got to get girls back. What would you do to get girls back? The clothing and dressing their characters was it worked before. What would we do now? Social games. Not quite yet. We don't have social media yet. The internet's here, but Facebook's not. We make a sparkly. So this is Bejeweled. Uh, it's launched in 2001 with 50 million downloads that year. Um, was $100 million of consumer spending and now 76% of our gamers are girls. We did it. Right? So this is like, the, like I said, the epitome of how marketing should work. You target a group, you do something and you get them. So this is really successful. Okay, but now the boys are like, oh, that's so stupid. What are the boys interested in? Explosions. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. And other, yeah, so sports though, right? Um, in 2003, the beginning was the beginning of Madden Mania. Um, Madden NFL launched in 2004 and was one of the top selling games um, and becomes one of the top selling franchises. Uh, total sales of video games in the U.S. during that year was $10 billion, and this is the game that moves forward the PC industry because all these football players catching and moving and stuff, they used to go like this, right? And I'm going to show you a video of uh, 2003 and then 2013 mm -hmm. Madden football. Um, it's pretty, pretty. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Um, that added um, or the boost to the computer industry 
uh, because older computers couldn't handle the graphics, even on the, the very beginning ones. So um, big, big boost to the PC industry at the time. Um, here's some more. This is uh, 2003. All of a sudden, the networks are picking up. The phones are getting better. They're in color now. Um, the screens are getting a little bit bigger. <clears throat> so Jamdat Bowling is launched in 2003. It was the first successful to uh, title of the nascent mobile industries, uh, games industry. Now Snake, we didn't really download Snake. It kind of came with our phone, kind of like Solitaire does. Um, and Bejeweled was successful, um, but not as much as Bowling for some reason. I'm not sure why. Maybe girls didn't have cell phones. I'm not sure. Um, so Bejeweled goes on to sell uh, 50 million units on, on mobile, and this is kind of what it looks like. It's teeny tiny jewels. So we can take our games on the road and we're no longer tied to our computer, desk, or television. Okay, another thing. Okay, so boys. We're talking about boys again. Boys are the main video game players at the time. They like cars, right? We haven't done anything with cars yet. Oh! I just... Sorry. I hit it too many times. Level of violence. Um, it's <laughs> uh, it was released in March 2000 uh, or in 2005, and by March of that year, the game sold over 12 million copies for PlayStation alone. Um, 20 million copies existed as of September 2007. Again, that's the last data I could find. But again, this spurs a huge controversy um, about the game's promotion and glorification of violence and crime. Uh, we got more complaints from parents. So what, if we still want to keep those same kids, what else are they doing? I kind of gave it away, right? They're listening to music. Uh-oh, we have an alien in our presence. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar Hero was released in 95, and we're able to get those kids who listen to music instead of playing games. Manufacturer offered the first two years offered um, to donate a dollar to the Alzheimer's Foundation for every copy that was sold. Okay, Crisis, another boost forward for the PC gaming uh, uh, industry and PCs in general. It was launched in 2007, over a million 
copies were sold in the first year. Now, games are getting more expensive too, so this, as these numbers kind of increase, you can imagine they're like, the revenue is tripling probably. Um, Crisis had incredible graphics and cutting edge technology. Again, I'm gonna show you um, 2007 and then 2013, how it's changed. Um, and it had, this is the first game that had its own terminology. You know how we create terminology nowadays, like Google is now a word and there are things that become words. BFF is now an official word, right? Um, they had their own techno terminology. Uh, Crisis had, uh, nano suits <laughs> that help them not be cold and, and you could earn uh, things that would protect your suit so that you can not get shot by your partner. Um, uh, it's, this also game, this is the first game you didn't have to win. Um, you just keep playing it. The, the player no longer uh, wins and moves on. And it's kind of a very early part of um, artificial intelligence. A very early step into artificial intelligence. So now parents are complaining about, oh, I haven't played the video yet. Sorry. That must be the jam station. So you could get, you know, if you're really good at tennis, you could play somebody who's not so good, and they would win, of course. But um, you you get you, you basically get out of it what you put into it. Um, you can sit there and go like this, you know, even with dance party or whatever, you can just go like this and still get the points and not move your legs. If you have, what do we have? We have we. <laughs> and I'm like, that's so fair. You're not moving your legs. I'm dying over here, and you're not moving your legs. Um, so we got a broader demographic, and I actually was, I used to be, this is, teaching is my second career. Um, I was a healthcare administrator for 24 years, and we use We Fit and We Balance for um, our long-term care facility patients, because it's really good for um, balance purposes. Um, active play, bowling, golf, tennis, um, We Fit, at least potential uh, popularity was grossly undermined by its core, underestimated by its core industry players. Um, when you guys, as marketing team, came up with this idea, they were like, "Oh my gosh, this is never going to work. Nobody's going to want to play tennis or table tennis when you got crisis out here, right?" But they were very wrong because we could grab everybody. Okay, mobile phones continue to expand. Um, the networks. Uh, this is like early Nokia, and this is even an iPhone 3, I mean, they're way better now, but. <clears throat> um, handset penetration at the end of 2010 was 4 billion. Mobile games market exceeded 9.6 billion by year end of 2011. And this is the most, um, I can't get this data anymore, but this is the most current data because they don't go by handset penetration, they go by subscribers because we have to subscribe to the networks now. So uh, as of May 2014, there were 7 million subscribers across the world. And that doesn't include, like I'm a subscriber and I have five people that use phones in my house, right? Well, not in my house, but I have a business phone and my phone and my husband's phone and my daughter's phone and my neighbor's phone. All online, but I'm just one subscriber, so 
Uh, the number is actually way higher than that. Okay, so we, we've done pretty well now. We've got, the, we've got it out on handsets. Uh, PCs are getting better, and so we can all play these games. Um, but how can we, let's go back to Pokemon, when, we, when we, we decided to sell trading cards and everything in the world that you can think of. Um, how else can we tap into entertainment market and get money for games? Anybody had any ideas? Movies. Oh, very good. Ding, ding, you win. <laughs> While it was a movie that became a video game, can you name some others that were movies first? Batman, uh, The Incredible Hulk, Pirates of the Caribbean um, were three others that were movies first. Uh, we also have video games. Oh, this is another one, sorry. Hello, boys and girls, whatever. My name is Captain Jack Sparrow. Ah, I think it's someone you've heard of me. As you may well know, there are times, almost constantly in fact, where I've heard to look at the world through the bottom of the glass. I may have also heard whisperings and rumors that Jack Sparrow would be recruiting a crew to undertake a voyage to the fountain of youth. Not true, of course not. But even if it were not true, you wouldn't be interested in joining me, would you? So <laughs> this is the ad that came up. So you wanted to see the video, or you wanted to get the video game, you wanted to watch the movie, you wanted to get the soundtrack, you wanted everything because Johnny Depp encouraged you to. <clears throat> it was also released in France, and I on we oui, I thought that was pretty funny. I know it's not how you spell we oui, probably in French, but um, okay. Here's video games to movies. We'll assign two of our best agents. I don't want them. I need an insider, someone who knows their methods, their hideouts. I need Harry Sheridan. God. So that, of course, is Lara Croft, and I love Gerard Butler, so I can get him in anything I do. My students know who I like. <laughs> um, Lara Croft was an example of a video game that became a movie. Um, the last one was, was um, actually released in 2013, so... Um, it's continued. This is what she looked like at the beginning, <laughs> and she morphed too, and this is kind of current. Of course, our Angelo, Angelina Jolie um, played her in two movies, um, and uh, let's see, the, the most recent one in 2010 that I have data on was Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. It grossed $335 million. Yeah, so good movie. I like now we've got um, books to video games. Gentlemen, the block list is real. Rogue Intel agencies might throw a on a problem, you're not the solution. I want every single operation related to them grounded and gutted now. I'm shutting third echelon down, effective immediately. That's the secret. So this was a Tom Clancy novel. A uh, Splinter Cell blacklist that became a video game. Um, and in that case, we, we're, they're starting to put politics into video games. Um, I played a video that, uh, in a previous presentation in the place of this one that was um, had several presidents in it. And there was some, the last time I presented it was to a younger group, so I had to kind of take it out because the content wasn't really appropriate. And in fact, the Johnny Depp video, he talks much more about rum. <laughs> And I took that out, you can tell. Um, all right, so what does it look like today, video gaming? Can you guys guess what? This was a book that became a movie that became a video game. Can you guess what it is? Hunger Harry Games. Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Hunger Games, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter was a book first, it became a movie, and then became a video game. There's even um, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, I can't even say it. Harry Potter Legos now. Lego game, so. Good. Oh. And 
that's Sock Boy. I know it looks like Sick Boy, but it's Sock Boy. Um, the very first one was really cool because it was a completely different concept. The player can create their own levels and it can be published for other players all over the world to play. And in the newest, not the newest version that's, I don't know if the not last one, there's a third one coming out. The second one, um, my daughter would be on chatting with the, the designer of that particular one that she was playing while she was playing it and asking questions. So it was really cool. Um, you no longer have to pass a level to move to a different world. You can just go back to the, uh, to the like main menu and pick a different world and go play it. Um, now with Little Big Planet 2, you can build your own levels, not just your own um, worlds. And um, you can build an entire game. The marketing slogan for um, Little Big Planet now is, it's, it used to be a platform game, but now it's a platform for games. So they're kind of trying to brand themselves as having their own platform like Wii and PlayStation and all that. Um, just a few weeks ago, a press release came out about accusing Little Big Planet of being more concerned with game creators than game players. Um, how many of you would care, right? <laughs> if it's that fun and the, the guy, the little guy's cute, isn't he? He's like adorable. So that's kind of, you're integrated into the game like the characters are right there with you. could stand in front of the TV and mimic what was on TV. Now they have Connect and our Wii things will actually recognize the movements we're making. So like I said, if I do the arm thing and the Wii things, I'm doing all the leg things and give me points even though I'm not. Um, the, the point is now we can play by ourselves with friends and we can compete across the world with these, the little uh, puppet master thing mode that they had. So, um, and lots of demographics and um, integration with your friends and good social time so also there's exercise in there too so dance party has not really had much um, complaint from parents the only complaint that i've heard um and i've kind of been grossed in video games so um is like when my daughter was i think dance party came out when she was 10 and she's wanting to mimic the clothing well, most of this is like 80s and and they actually dress for the type of music that they're so the 80s music, the dancers are wearing 80s clothes and hair. It's like, really, Karin? <laughs> you can't change every day. Let's go to a place where everything is made of blocks. Where the only <laughs> limit is your imagination. Let's go wherever you want to go. Climb the tallest mountains. Venture down to the darkest caves. Build anything you want. Day or night, rain or shine, because this is the most significant sandbox you'll ever set foot in. Build a majestic castle, invent a new machine, or take a ride on a roller coaster. Play with friends, build your own little community. Protect yourself with the strongest armor that you can craft, and fight off the dangers of the night. No one can tell you what you can or cannot do, with no rules to follow. This adventure. It's up to you. So Minecraft, I, I, I see some smiles around here. I heard some nods. Um, the cool thing about like 
right now my daughter and I can sit on the opposite ends of the couch and build the same place. Like she'll go, oh, I'm gonna go over here and build this building and I'm gonna go over here and work on the pool. But we're, work, we're working on the same landscape. Um, as simple as it looks, uh, what is the most common child's play game, right? Blocks and Legos, right? The whole building thing. So um, it's just a kind of a technology version of, of that. Okay, here's another guess. So we kind of moved forward and there's not a lot of new stuff to do at this point besides making things better graphically and more music and stuff. Um, so one way we can continuously make money is serial games. Um, kind of like sitcoms on TV. There's a new episode every month or so. So uh, see if you can guess what this first one is just by the music. CSI, good. So these are just some popular serial games that come up with a new episode, a new crime to fight. Um, Risen, Soul Calibur, Tiger Woods, PGA, um, Forza Motorsport, and Ninja Gaiden are some other examples of serial games that are popular. Okay, so we've gotten into the movies. Now let's do the kind of mixed dance party and movies. Zelda was one of the first. Um, Lord of the Rings is another one that's a pretty popular the, the song. I think it's the second one in Lord of the Rings, that song that the guys sing in the, I can't even remember the name, but it's played in the video game too. It's pretty cool. I think you can try doing a rap to the Mario theme song. I can give it a try. She give me you mobile hero, you can call me those From where my inspiration comes, nobody knows But I kept my pockets double stuffed like Oreos Since creating the digital kingdom of the Mario's It all began on Donkey Kong He was just a jump man, hitting his monkey on And trying to save Daisy, was making him crazy He's come a long way since those 8-bit 80s But who knew in the future he'd be killing Boombas And Super Princess Peach from King of the Koopas We threw a cape on his back and he became Super. These are the life and times of a mushroom trooper. His brother's a coward. Could be divine intervention from a higher power. But Mario defends Luigi spitting fire flowers. It is weird that it's been all these years since he originally appeared. But Mario's still here. Class. Um, okay, we got clothing. My daughter has both of these shirts. <laughs> uh, periodic table of Minecraft. Um, that's more Minecraft up there. <clears throat> We've got cups and egg holders and action figures and guns and games and all of these other things that are sold. So what's the point of all this? The video game industry has successfully pulled off the epitome of the perfect marketing strategy. We can learn how to ask the right questions and how to react to our customers' needs. And realize that this industry, as do many, moves so fast we can't become complacent. That's the important thing. We can't go, oh my gosh, Mario was so great. Let's sit back and enjoy all the profits because somebody's going to come in behind us and grab the market. So uh, I, when I was on this morning at 2 o'clock in the morning making sure all my videos worked and stuff um, and making sure there was no uh, more recent data, these things were popping up. So I, I copied them for you, like all over everywhere. Anytime you type video games, the new advertisements are all over the place, so. Perfect timing. Does anybody have any questions for me? No? Well, thank you for your attention. It was fun. <laughs>